This morning we're having children walking from Chimwave School, which is the local school just down the road, uh, to come in to collect a thousand trees. What are they doing with the trees? So there used to be a culture of cutting and planting, however that seems to have died out and there's a massive issue with sustainability. Deforestation, population increase tenfold, so there's a huge demand for firewood. People are using firewood for cooking every day, they've got their little embowlers and they're used to cooking on, or open fires even, which are not efficient at all. Uh, using it for making their houses, uh, for charcoal, there's a big issue with the black market selling charcoal. People just think about today or tomorrow, it's about survival, it's about getting through the day, it's about making their encima for that day or putting a roof on their house. People aren't thinking about tomorrow or next week, next month. But they are aware of the problem. They're totally aware of the problem, but they don't think about 10 years down the line when there'll be no mature trees for the environment, for the children. So they're clearing land on hills uh, to plant maize because they need encima. But the problem is after two years, uh, because there's no roots holding the topsoil, after two years all the topsoil disappears, goes all the way down to the Shiri River. And so then the land becomes completely infertile and useless. So they're not thinking 10 years down the line. So two weeks ago, these children came up and they planted the seedlings. And now they're taking the saplings, 10 or 20 each, down to the school where they're going to plant it in the forest beside their school. Families, uh, teachers, head teachers, chiefs, everybody is totally on side and just wanting to get behind a project that they're seeing that with a little bit of effort, with a little bit of community sensitisation, that they can have trees in their area again. They all, the chiefs, they remember as children running around big forests, mature forests, and climbing up trees. And they, they, so they can see, they've seen the change over the last 50 years. Uh, and they, I guess, I guess they can see a bit of hope. And do you think there is hope? Do you think you can get those forests back here again? I think if you don't have hope, you don't have anything. And I think this, this project proves how easy it is. And there are similar projects on a, um, in the communities. Uh, but this is specifically for schools. Because if we can educate children at this age, then the aim is that for the next generation, they will have forests. That's what we're hoping. This is just one of, of many projects that Fisherman's Rest are carrying out in the community. So for volunteers, it's something that they can get involved with, the organisation of it, if it's the right time of year. It's not a standalone project for a volunteer on their own. The volunteer would just be part of the activities of Fisherman's Rest in the community. There's a whole long list of projects that we're involved in, in the community, in schools. But also if someone's got a little bit of initiative, a little bit of energy, um, practical skills, um, enthusiasm and they want to invest in schools in the community there's a whole range a whole array of different things opportunities they could do so if you just had a volunteer that had those skills or initiative to learn it themselves mm. and come out and implement mm. it i mean you can help them but yeah. if, if they're so we've we've got the the structure to be able to facilitate that to empower people to come here to use their idea to use their initiative to be able to go and make a difference in the community make a difference at schools and change lives essentially. Mm. Everywhere you look around here, there's a need. Every, every, there's, you look in schools, look in communities, and you can't help but think there's so much we could do. But then it comes down to time, it comes down to money, it comes down to resources. And you guys are very busy here, you have a lot going on, so you don't want to have a volunteer come and spend you know, two weeks training them in and mm -hmm. trying to teach them what's going on. For you guys, that would be a waste mm -hmm. of your time in mm -hmm. essence, wouldn't it? What we're all about is empowering and facilitating. So. If a volunteer was to come and to have the idea, to have the initiative, then great, we'll do whatever we can to make that work. Because if we can facilitate change in communities, in schools, with families, then that's, that's why we're here. That's the reason we're here. That's what Fisherman's Rest is all about. Just down the road from Fisherman's Rest is Tiltonse Centre, where Ernest runs myriad programmes for local community. I'm so not getting involved. I'm a bit uncoordinated when it comes to football. I'm better at computers, so they have computers going on inside, I'll help there. That same dedication and initiative that's required of the volunteers with Fisherman's Rest is also required of the community members, which Ernest pointed out to me. Actually, if you grow with that mentality, then you get nowhere. You're supposed to work and uh, generate your own money, that's how you move forward. So actually, we, we, we feel like we have to be self-sufficient, we have to be independent in some way financially. To lead by example, right? we are growing our own veggies, we are running a film nights, selling our popcorn, our granites. 
The money we get from there, we use it for productive issues. We buy paint, paint the building, and they go bad. And um, yeah, we're mostly doing everything on our own. If an external source come, comes in, oh, that's quite better. Mm. Yeah, it just adds up to our momentum. Yeah, sure. If no one comes in, we are not grounded. We are still on the move, all right? If someone drops in, gives us 10 steps or four forward. So we're very happy to receive the, the donations. Yeah. If they don't come, we don't go out begging for issues now. We're not supposed to be like that. We have a mentality where we say, you reap where you sow, right? If you, don't, if, if you haven't sown, then now, yeah, we believe in the law of cause and effect. Because then it happens. You generate money, do what you want to do. But as, uh, just to help my community, like to share with them what I have inside. I'm very happy when someone is helped out and one day sits down and realizes that oh, he was helped by me. So that's something to push me, to keep me going. So yeah, it really keeps me moving. What we do here is more than they do at school, right? We supplement their school syllabus. We have activities which um, somehow I'm amalgamated with the, with the school syllabus, right? Talk of the primary school. Whenever they're having troubles in their, in their studies, we urge them to come over. Of course, we have that in our program. Right, it's a homework club for the primary schools and even the secondary schools. Whenever they're having problems with their studies, they can come over. We help them. Right. On the other side, on the activities, we even include the that educated element in it and the spiritual element. We want we want to build the children into productive citizens. Right? Most schools don't have libraries in their in their school in their school campuses, so we encourage them when they come here, that they have to develop their habit of reading. Sure. So we organize our quizzes, competitions, yeah. It's, 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 it's activity, it's creative and fun at the same time. And mm. yeah, it's very important with this world of uh, HIV and AIDS, most of the youth, when they're, when they're just grounded, their minds are corrupted by doing other immoral things. So organizing activities here like footballs is uh, one way of keeping them busy, yeah. So when they're busy, they get home, they're all tired, they cannot think of something else. And it's already dark, they sleep in the morning, they have to think of something else productive. So it's like, we really work hand in hand with the community and uh, the schools, just to make sure we are heading forward. Volunteers, you are a blessing to us. Having you around here, is, we learn a lot from you. And uh, I also hope you, you can learn something from us as well. They bring us uh, some issues we can learn from them. And they can also learn from us, like our, our culture. It's so like everything is homemade here in our villages, in our communities. Everything is homemade. No need to go out there in the shops or anything. We just use. Mm. It's quite interesting to just to see how people live in that kind of, uh, that kind of uh, uh, situations and environments where they don't ask much from life and they're just sourcing everything locally and surviving still. Yeah.